uh, VLOOKUP function can be useful in particularly in two scenarios. In scenario number one, it's just you would like to know if the same value exists in both tables. Or scenario number two, that you would like to add information from table number one to table number two, you need to merge information from both tables. Let's first look at the scenario number one. For the purposes of the demonstration, I have here on the left side, I set up a list of authorized payments, which tells me the account number, the name of the, or of the account holder, and the department when the person works. And these are the authorized payments. And I have here the list of actual payments, so you can see I have amount paid, the payment date and account to which the amount was paid. And in scenario number one, I would like to see if all the payments went to authorized accounts. And for this, I will use a VLOOKUP function. So I will click here in the first uh, cell where I would like to set up a VLOOKUP function. And in the left upper corner, you have a function wizard. So click on it. In the search, put VLOOKUP. and click on next and now we will set it up. So the first thing that we need to set up is a search criterion. Basically it's the value which is the same in both lists and according to which we will searching. The only common value in both lists is our account number. So I will click on account number. Here it's important to retain that you always click on the value in the list where you're setting up your VLOOKUP function. I would like to set it up in a list of actual payments, so I'm clicking on this, on the value which is in the list of actual payments. Second thing is to set up array. Array is basically the area where I will be searching for the information which I would like to have displayed. In this case, it's this area. It's a list of authorized payments. So I will pick the whole area, meaning the account name and department, which is here. Index. Index is basically telling me, is asking me to choose the column in the area where I'm searching, in which is the value which I would like to have displayed. So I'm searching in list of authorized payments and for scenario number one I would like to have my account number displayed. So for me the information about the account is in column number one. So I put here one and we are ready to go. So click OK and to ease our life we will copy over the function dragging it down. And as you can see, we're starting to have a problem. So here is the first problem. As we can see, the account number in the list of actual payments and the displayed account number in the list of authorized payments is not the same. So we need to rectify it. I will rectify it in the first cell then to be able to copy over correctly. So I will click on the first cell. I will click on my function wizard again to access it. And here we omitted important thing, which is a sort order. The sort order is basically telling us that if it's empty, it is showing us it's looking for a value which are close to each other. They are not identical. But in this particular scenario, we want the account numbers to be identical, to be able to identify if there are any unauthorized payments. So, to tell the program, look only for values which are identical in both tables, we'll put here a zero. In other words, if the value, if our search criterion doesn't match exactly in the area we're searching, the program will return not available. We'll click OK, we'll drag again. And it's getting much better. So we can see that indeed it helped. But now we have another issue. We have a problem, for example, here where we know that this account exists. 
in the list of authorized patents, but it's not shown. We have not available. How come? You can clear if we click on the first cell, double left mouse double click, we see that the area we're searching is this red box. Okay, and if we click here where the first not available value is displayed, we see that the area we're searching is moving. So of course it couldn't find it because the account number is outside the area we're searching. So we need to fix it. So again, we will go to the first cell. We'll click on the function wizard. And we basically have to tell the program, look, in the area where you're searching, the area has to be stable. We need to anchor it. So we go to array, which is our area where we're searching, and we put a dollar sign in front and behind each letter. This called is absolute formatting. The name is absolutely not important, but what is important to retain is when you put the dollar signs in whatever function you're setting up, is basically telling the program, look, it's going to be the area where you're looking, it's going to be fixed. It might be the area, it might be the cell, it might be the column. We click OK. We drag down again to copy it over. And now we can see that we have it set up correctly. And indeed, they, we have identified two, um, author, two payments to accounts which were not authorized. And then we can do more analysis on this. Now for scenario number two, we would like to add information from table number one to table number two, basically to merge the information which can be useful for further analysis, because each list has a different values and we would like to have it in one list only. I will click here again. I would like to have displayed the name or account holder from the list of authorized payments in the list of actual payments and I will do it through VLOOKUP. I will click again on our function wizard. You look up. Click next. Search criterion it remains the same. It has to be the account number because that's the only value which is common to both lists. And again, I will be picking, I will be selecting the account in the list where I am setting up the VLOOKUP function. Array will be the list of authorized payments and to prevent it from moving I will again fix it through dollar signs. Index is the column in which the information I would like to have displayed is contained. As I this time I would like to have the name displayed for me it's a column number two in the area where I'm searching so I will put two and a sort order I will put zero, meaning that our search criterion account number has to match exactly. If it doesn't match exactly, it will return that the value is not available. I will click OK, drag it, and we have it correctly set up. For the last time, I will do it with the department. So function wizard again, we look up next search criterion is our account number array is our list of authorized payments stabilized index i would like to have a department the name of the department where the person is working displayed so for me in the area where i'm searching it's a column number three I put three. Again, a sort order will be zero, meaning the account has to match exactly. I will click OK, copy it over, and we are done. So now you might have a question what happens if the list of authorized payments is extended? It might be the case that over time you need to add more rows of authorized payments, then of course you will need to adjust the VLOOKUP function. So you will need to adjust the area where you're looking for, where you're looking for your values. Actually, the good tip might be that if you know that your list of authorized payments will grow, you will just select the area which is slightly bigger. 
and it will contain then in the future the new rows that you might be adding. The next thing is of course your list of actual payments for a grow. So let's imagine that this will be a new payment. Of course you will add a new payment and then you can just drag the function already set up and it's gonna work absolutely fine. Might be, or you might also have a question if the sorting will somehow impact the lookup function or if you'll have to modify it. The answer is no and I will demonstrate it. So you select the whole table, then you click data and sort and let's assume that we will sort it according to the account. Okay, and as you can see, it didn't have any impact on VLOOKUP, it still works perfectly fine. Another point is that the VLOOKUP is kind of a dynamic function. Dynamic in a sense that if something changes in the search value or the value you are displaying, it will be immediately picked up by your VLOOKUP. So let's Im imagine that Anna moved to a management. She doesn't work in HR any longer, so she works in a management. So you can see it was immediately updated here. The same thing if I select the account and I will input another account number here, it's gonna change. So you can see that this has changed completely. The same thing if I change the account in the list of actual payments, you can see immediately that the VLOOKUP function reacted to it. I will just put it back. And the last but not least is that this tutorial was prepared for LibreOffice. The same function exists in Microsoft Excel as well. The values displayed will be exactly the same, but the logic how you set up of this function is slightly different. Thank you very much and please let me have your thoughts.